As disappointed as some of these Commonwealth Games officials are, I understand that, but the decision has been made and the decision will not be changing. The Victorian Premier sticking to his guns. Shelving the starting pistol before the first race even began. I thought it was a joke when I first heard the news that they're actually cancelling the mm. Commonwealth Games. I mean, this is not the local bowls club cancelling a weekend meet. Blaming a budget blowout for the state's false start. Oh, oh no! Oh my gosh! Seven billion, just too much cash to splash. We went through all the other options. What other contingencies? And even uh, Melbourne Games uh, with reduced sports, with all manner of different changes, you could not bring this back to anywhere near the budget. Back in April, the state government declared the games would cost about $2.6 billion. Just weeks ago, it claimed it had blown out to $4 billion. Yesterday, the forecast was inflated to between $6 and $7 billion. Who did the financial modelling around this? I expect there would be some cost increase, but uh, to blow out to that potential $5, $6 or even $7 billion. Pick the ball back up, mate, and try and find a solution before you just throw it all out. With accusations of exaggeration, Stated cost overruns, in our opinion, are a gross exaggeration and not reflective of the operational costs presented to the Victorian 2026 Organising Committee Board as recently as June this year. Prompting calls for the Premier to explain how the figures got so fudged on dismount. Somebody has made a real mess of this and it's our athletes and their families that have been training for so long that are going to pay a price. The last Commonwealth Games hosted here in Australia in 2018 on the Gold Coast was done for $1.5 billion. So anybody that believes Dan Andrews when he says this is blown out to $6 billion, possibly $7 billion, is absolutely kidding themselves. OK, we can get this back on track. We just need to cut some costs. First, no more gold medals. Everyone wins bronze. And we'll replace the bronze medals with wagon wheels. It's perfect. Next, don't worry about accommodating athletes. We'll just replace them with dumb local comedians. Hey, Taunts. Yeah? Something wrong with one tennis racket. It's all... Mate, get in there. You'll be fine. Let's go. Yeah? Honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it for Dan. So with Victoria's <laughs> Commonwealth Games officially... Closed. How big a bill will taxpayers foot for Dan dropping the ball? Those negotiations are actually happening now. Uh, and when that work is finished, when there's an outcome, then we'll report. Peter Beattie, former Queensland Premier who chaired the 2018 Commonwealth Games, joins us now. Uh, Peter, how much could Victoria have to pay for pulling out of hosting the Games? Look, I don't know what the contract provides, uh, and obviously each contract is slightly different between different uh, games, but there's always a penalty. Uh, if I recall correctly, I think the penalty in the Queensland contract was around, this is the Gold Coast 2018, was around about a billion dollars, but it will vary from contract to contract, and only Dan Andrews can tell you that. A billion is a lot. I mean, it's a lot anyway, <laughs> but it's especially a lot if your budget's 2.6 to begin with, so it would be a big disincentive. In this case, the Victorian government's saying it's, it had blown out to six to seven. When you ran it, you ran the, uh, the Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast for about two billion. Can you imagine how six to seven billion could have happened? It's always more expensive, Waleed, to run an event in the regions. Our budget was actually 1.2. I was trying to remember what it was and I mistakenly said two. I, now I've double checked, it's actually 1.2. We ran, it at, at, uh, we ran it within the budget. In fact, we returned $100 million to the Queensland taxpayer because the government was pretty tough on us to make sure we stuck within the budget, which we did. So ours was 1.2. Uh, obviously, you've got that was five years ago, so you've got to add inflation. There's a whole lot of spiralling costs in business that have taken place in construction since then. I don't know, obviously, the details of Victoria. I do know, as I was saying, once you run an event like this in the regions, it costs a lot more. Running the event on the Gold Coast costs a lot more than running it in Brisbane or Melbourne or Sydney. And the reason for that is very simple and it's obvious. They don't have the stadia, they don't have the infrastructure, they don't have the transport corridors. The list goes on. And that's why running it in regional areas is a lot more expensive than running it in the capital cities. Peter, uh, no state wants it. Is this an Australia problem now? Should another state have to step, step in and save it? Well, the reality is every state's ruled it out. Now, I'm a strong supporter of the Commonwealth Games because it is an opportunity for para sports to have inclusiveness that doesn't exist at the Olympics. As you know, there's the Olympics and the Paralympics. At the Commonwealth Games, you have events. You have an event, then you have a, a para sport event, then another event and another para sport event. It's inclusive. 
And to me, you know, maybe I'm a bit strange and people would tell you that anyway, but I think that's important. So we treat everyone in an inclusive way. That doesn't happen in other major sporting events, so I'd like to see it survive. However, every state's ruled it out. And bluntly, I see there's a suggestion that Christchurch may, may pick it up. Well, you know... Christmas may come early too. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the likelihood is it'll have to go back to Birmingham where it was last time. Before the Gold Coast, it was successful in in Glasgow. London had the Olympics. They're the only possibilities. Canada's never really been that interested. South Africa was allocated it or awarded it in Durban a few years ago, but they they weren't prepared to sign off on some of the conditions, so that fell over. So outside India and outside Malaysia, and I don't think they have enough time within the three years of 1,000 days. But outside that, I think it has to go back to the UK if it's going to survive. Well, what about Gold Coast? You've just run it. you clearly got the stuff. You handed money back to the government. You can take that as your starter. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind, but the truth, the truth is that uh, with the Olympics around the corner, they can only focus realistically on one key event. Now, Peter, with a massive cancellation like this, the buck has to stop somewhere... Mm. Should heads roll over this? Look, there'll always be uh, justifications. There'll always be someone has to take responsibility for this, as there is whenever a major decision like this is made. But at the end of the day, that's not a matter for me. I have a view on it, but it's not a matter for me. What is your view? (laughs) Oh, no. uh, well, Ed, I'm not going to share that with you. I'm, I'm trying to be diplomatic in my old age. It's a new, it's a new feeling for me. I'm really struggling with it, and you're not helping. Mate, if you want to be diplomatic, don't say I have a view on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I retract that. I don't have a view anymore. <laughs> Sorry, this isn't Parliament. You can't retract it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr Speaker, I retract that yeah. and I apologise. Right. Okay. <laughs> oh, Peter, well, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. No, that's a pleasure. All of us, guys. Well, Nick Cody is here, sans sweatband. Mm-hmm. Where is it, mate? Oh, it off the point. Yeah, it's gone. It didn't fit. <laughs> it actually just broke. What, what do you make of this? Well, it's a billion dollars spent on this, cancelling that. There was an east-west link tunnel, a billion dollars for no road. That's $2 billion for nothing. I don't want to tell people how to do that, but we could have just bought Bitcoin. You know, just have a, <laughs> yeah. have a crack next time, Victoria. I think you're saying if we... I had... vote Labor, by the way. I just, I'm in Steve Price's seat and I just feel some, like, weird, <laughs> some energy coming, coming out of it. <laughs>